Hey folks, back with the Dragon Eye tutorial part 2. It's painting time! Yay! So here's my supplies. I have a jar of clean water, some brushes. This is the main size I use for painting, it's a nice soft brush. Let's see, that's the brush right there. I have two smaller brushes, they're going to be for the glaze and the metallic powder. A small palette. I uh, mostly use acrylic paints. They just normal acrylic paints from craft shop, and they come in little tubes of colours. And I have a separate type of purple paint that I've just picked up so that I don't have to keep mixing uh, red and blue all the time for a tiny bit of purple. So this is just um, craft paint. Good for a variety of projects. It'll be fine to use. Um, this is all dry stuff inside, uh, so that's fine. So, first thing first is you need to decide on your base coat. So I'm going to give this one a purple base coat. Uh, you can go dark or light, you can do any particular colour. You're not going to see much of the base coat when it's painted because there's going to be a lot of different colours and powders and stuff on top, but it's going to give the basic tone of your eye. So I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of this craft paint, there's a little blob on the end there, pop it into my palette and then pick up some water on the brush, just dip the brush in, don't shake it, lift it out, and then smooth the edge of the brush across the palette to deposit the water and do this two or three times. You want a watery consistency of paint, I'm just going to mix this in. You don't want it too thin that the colour is not going to hold, but you want it thin enough to run into the cracks. And then we start painting. So just paint over the clay. Because it's watery, it's not going to be a complete coverage, that's fine. Like I said, it's just going to be a base coat. So this is our baked eye. When it's come out, it's nice and nice and hard and you'll notice that the thin bits of clay maintain some flexibility and this clay is nice because if you have a thin piece of clay that's baked it's flexible enough that you can bend it in half without it snapping I don't know if this is true for thicker slices but certainly for the thin slices they're flexible enough that you can do that and I've tried it and it's quite fun so they're quite durable these baked eyes. Let's just smooth the paint all the way over. I'm running out a little bit, so I'm going to put a spot more in and water it down a little. You really don't need much paint at all for these eyes. Um, one, because they're very small pieces of work, and two, because you're making them watery as well, you're not using the thickest paint. You can use thick paint, but it'll obscure the texture a bit the thicker you make the paint. And uh, the texture adds nice detail, so you do want that to show through a bit. So, once you've gone all the way around your dragon, just Tilt it in various directions, look for unpainted bits. It's up to you what you want to do with the back, if you want to paint the back or leave it untouched. I quite like leaving it untouched because it, you can see when you finish the piece the difference between going from just the basic clay to this really awesome dragon on the other side. It gives a nice contrast. But it's entirely up to you. So I'm just uh, picking up paint on the brush and poking it into the nooks and crannies. Just making sure there's paint everywhere and while I don't do the back often I tend to go around the edges at least. Um, 
walk in between these spikes here. And attack it from different angles so you know you're getting the paint in everywhere. And shifting my grip on here so that I can do the eyelids without my fat thumb getting in the way. Um, and what you can do then is use the edge of your brush with some paint on and just scrape your brush across the edge of a piece and the paint will gather thicker on the edge where you scraped so you've got some nice tonal variety there. So that's our base coat. You can see, you can still see the grey underneath but it's mostly purple and um, the camera is really not doing a great job of picking that up. Let's see. It's a little better. And then we're just going to leave this to dry and I will be back when that's dry. Okay, purple is dry. Mostly. That's fine. Now I've decided I'm going to do this one uh, with a bit of red, blue, maybe green. So, let's start with some scarlet, I think. Yeah, same thing. We'll take a little bit out onto the brush and then scoop up some water. And water it down a little. And then you decide where you want it to be. So I'm going to do scarlet across the top here. So just dab it on and you can see it's pretty dark because we've used a, a dark undercoat. Um, I'm not coating it completely. I'm not being thorough. I'm just dabbing it on where I want some some red to be. And you'll see it it'll it's it's quite watery so it'll run down into the cracks and, and fill the grooves and stuff. So the top half there has a nice reddish hue going on. And then the bottom I'm going to do with blue. Oops. So I got a cobalt blue, so just uh, wash the brush off. Pick up some blue, just a little bit. Water it down. And then start applying this across the bottom. You don't have to separate the top and bottom in different colors. You can do it however you want. This is just how I'm deciding to do this one. So you can see the bottom is bluish, the top is reddish. I'm going to brush a little bit of blue into that top eyelid there. And I'm going to touch a little bit of blue across the tips of the scales here. It'll pick up some red paint but that's fine, it'll, it'll, um, it'll mix nicely. 
and a little bit along there so that's our next coat and now we're going to leave that dry okay that coat's dry so it's bluish at the bottom reddish on top uh, next i'm going to do the green coat i've got some emerald green and I've cleaned the, the dry black paint out of there because this is quite a bright colour. So same as usual, take a little dab of paint out, water it down. And then keep this one kind of thick so that it doesn't run too much. I'm just going to apply some highlights now wherever I want them. So I'm just sweeping the brush across so that it picks up the the raised areas of the dragon. So I'm keeping the brush quite flat and just sort of dragging it along and doing this on the top and bottom. I'm putting a little bit extra on the leaves just to make them predominantly green. See how we're looking. And then check this side, we'll put a little bit down here too. So you can see how on this line of stripes and dots it's kind of sunk into the, the grooves. So it's picking out the texture of the paint. And in the leaf you can see it doing the same thing. So that's the last coat. You don't have to do three, you can do as, as few or as many as you like, it's up to you. Entirely your decision how you want your dragon to be coloured. You can go nuts and put tons of different colours all over it. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to let that one dry. And plant the brush in the water to dry off. And uh, we're not going to be needing the paints. So the next thing I'm going to do is pigment powders. Uh, but we'll wait for, wait for this to dry first. So, paint is dry. Oops, got fluff on my fingers. And you can see it's, uh, it's kind of mottled. But we're not done yet. So, okay, pigment powders. Wherever you get your clay from, they should also sell pigment powders, or you can buy them online. Um, I would link the place I get them from, well, I will just in case, but they're in South Africa, so probably not of much much help to anyone not in South Africa. So, let me twist the camera up a little bit. These are my metallic powders, and then I have various colours, and I'll just show you what they look like if I open this one. Very fine powder with pigment in. So I have a bunch of colours, colours and various shades of copper, there's a silver one, green, blue, purple, pink, uh, satiny one. And I need to decide what I'm going to put on here. So I usually put three or four on. Where's my red? I think I'm going to do green, blue, red and purple should be fine. Now you just use a dry brush. So let's start with 
the purple one. And they are crazy fine and you don't need much at all. Let me just twist the camera back down. So I usually, if, it's, if there's powder on, on the lid, I'll just pick it up from here and that'll, that'll be enough. See there's a little bit on the brush there. And then just decide where you want it to go and brush it across. And I'm just going to put a little bit here and there on the bits of the paint that I can see that are still purple. Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this going on the dragon at all because the camera struggles with picking up sort of opalescent, iridescent things. But uh, you'll be able to see the, the process at least. So I'm just touching the, the powder on here and there. Let's put a little across the eyelid. And what it's doing is giving it a metallic shimmer with a hint of colour. So that's a little of the purple one. find the the bits that are still red so this is a, a coppery red you can see it we've applied just there on the curve I'm not going to do too much it's easy to go overboard with these and totally hide the, the paint underneath so a little bit on, on the leaves And touch down there. And a little down here. Okay, I may come back to that one. But I'm going to do the blue next. Let's see. That looks nice. See on this leaf, there's a bit of a blue sheen there now. I tend to mix my colours, so if I have a green paint of undercoat, I'll put a different colour powder on top. So it layers the colours nicely. to be careful not to pick up too much on the brush because if you put it on too thickly it completely obscures whatever's underneath and I don't want to do that I just want to add a little touch of extra color a bit more green, these two at the top. Um, and just on the bottom of the leaves. And across the bottom eyelid ok 
Okay, and now I'm gonna come back to this coppery red and just see what I can put a little bit more of this, put a little bit on this leaf because this one stands out the most. It'll make it look a little bit brighter. So again, I'm just applying it in little patches here and there. And then just brush over the, the whole thing, wipe off any excess powder. So let's see how this looks. Again, it's quite difficult to see it on the camera. But you can kind of see the colours shimmering. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And the next thing, we don't need to wait for this to dry, obviously. The next thing is the glazes. So let me pick up my glazes and move them across. The powders out of the way. So these are just ceramic glaze. Um, I've used a different type of glaze, like a regular craft glaze or multi-purpose glaze on the clay and it tends to dry sticky and um, uh, this one I found works really nice so Filani is the company I get the clay from they're South African and they produce down here so clear glaze we're going to put that on last and then I have a selection of colors tilt the camera up a little so you can see those I tend to use the same colours for the glazes um, as I've coloured the dragon, but I, I mix up where I put them. So this is a red, green, blue, purple kind of dragon, so I'm going to try the vermilion red. I haven't tried this one yet, this is a new one. The cobalt blue is a lovely dark one. Comes out very nice. Um, emerald green, that's quite a bright one, and I'm going to try the chrome glaze, this is a yellowish one. So I'll move the others aside. Uh, I've got a little brush for these. I will start with the vermilion red. So I'll decide which places I want red glaze on, and I think I'm going to do the tip here. So put a little bit on there and a little bit across these three spikes. And you can use a dry or a wet brush. If you're finding the glaze is a little bit thick, you can use a wet brush and uh, it'll make it a bit, a bit runnier when it's going on. So this is a orange-red colored glaze. Um, sometimes it does go on quite spotty. But it should dry smooth. So I'm going to do a patch of red up there and I'm going to do a little bit of red down the bottom here too. Let's just spread it out a little bit. That's that one. The cobalt blue next. And I'll do some nice dark blue areas. I'll do the these first two leaves and I'll do this bit up here. Create a nice splurt sound there. So you can see when I spread this one out, it's this lovely shimmering semi-translucent blue colour. I like this one, it's very nice and it looks especially nice when it's over either the blue paint underneath or the uh, the blue pigment powder. The blue pigment powder is quite bright and this is a darker colour blue. They go nice together. So I'll just 
gonna spread this out. It's also nice if you if you have one color of glaze or paint and uh, of pigment powder or paint underneath and use a different color glaze on top. It gives it a nice opalescent look. With the different shimmering colors. Okay, that's the blue. Then the green. Do the green down this end and up here a little. You can see that's very bright, that green. It's not quite so bright when it dries, but it is very green. <laughs> now, it doesn't matter if you don't cover the whole dragon with the coloured glazes as your base coat, because you're going to be covering the whole dragon afterwards with the clear glaze. So you can just put the coloured glaze where you want them. And remember, they, they're not going to be they're not going to cover an area completely with a block of that colour, they're just going to add whichever colour you've chosen as a sheen to the dragon. So that's the green one. So you can see it's already starting to shimmer quite nicely. Colours aren't very vibrant on the camera. Uh, in real life, they're, they're a bit more vibrant and a little bit darker. And I'm going to try the chrome one, which is also a new one for me. Let's see, I'm put it around the edges of the eye and the corners. So it's uh, yellowish, not too bright. And just brush this along the eyelids. It's gone over the eye there. I'm uh, I'm not great at sticking between the lines, as it were. I tend to get some glaze and some paint on the eye. Inevitably, at some point, uh, it doesn't matter because when it's dry, you can just use your nail and scrape it off. It's easy enough to get rid of. So that's our first glaze coat. I'm just going to pop my brush in the water there to stop it from going hard when it dries. That's how it looks. We're going to let this dry and then do another two coats of clear glaze. So that coat is dry. I've put this on a black cardboard background to see if the camera will pick it up any better. So that's sort of what it looks like right now. Next two coats are going to be just clear glaze. And that's a hungry cat yelling at me in the background, as you can probably hear. So, we're just going to apply this all over and leave it to dry and then another coat and leave it to dry. You can put on as many coats as you like. Uh, the more coats you put on, the glassier it'll look. Um, and I, I also don't bake this. I found that with baking it, if you have any deep parts, it'll bubble. So I just leave it to dry naturally. What you can do is let it dry naturally and then bake it. Uh, it gives it a more durable finish, but I found just leaving it to dry is, is plenty. So we're just going to paint this glaze all over and scoop it out of the uh, deeper grooves so that it doesn't gather because we're going to be putting beads in there. Um, but yeah, with regards to the quartz, I found that three quartz gives it a nice glossy finish without it being too glassy. And then over the bottom half. So this one we're putting all over, so make sure you work it into all the nooks and crannies. 
uh, cover every every part of the the dragon eye. And put a little bit much down there, so I'm just going to spread it up here. And the glaze also really helps to catch the colours in, in different lights. Okay, now again it's okay if it looks a bit patchy, but if it's uh, looping in a few places that's fine, it'll dry nice and flat. So that's our second coat of glaze. And I'm just going to let this one dry. I'll do the, the third coat off camera as well and let that one dry and then we'll move straight on to putting the beads on. So our glaze is completely dry. That's how we're looking. And the last thing we need to do is super glue this and super glue beads into the little grooves. So I'm just using Loctite super glue, it's normal super glue. And first thing is wiggle the little bail out, just grip it and pull it, it should slide out pretty easily. And then I slide it into the top of the super glue bottle, uh, which is sealed. Mm -hmm, there we go. Make sure you've got some glue on there and then slide it back into the hole it came out of. And it should start catching while you're sliding it down, but just push it right down. And it'll, it'll glue in. And it should become pretty st stable in there. Right, next thing we're going to do is, this is the last thing. I put these on last so that they don't get painted over with glaze that can make them look a little bit cloudy, is all these little dots we've made, the little indents, I'm going to put beads in. I have a selection of beads. Tiny, tiny little beads. These are all blue. And they are really, really small. I'm not going to focus on that. There. And then I have these even smaller green beads. And in here, I have a variety, but I mostly use these. They like the blue ones, but they're sort of orangey, metallic colour with various other colours behind, if I just pop that on there. So, um, I also have little clear multicoloured beads non-metallic, they're just regular colours. So decide which beads you want to use and then glue them in. So I'm going to zoom the camera in for this because I'll be working straight onto the table. I think that should be close enough. And my super glue bottle keeps gluing over at the top. Um, just try and get some of this off. And what you could also do if that happens is grab a needle and just poke it through. Or not, as the case may be. There we go. Make sure it goes right through. So, let's get gluing. Um, sometimes you can use the pliers to put the beads in, other times I, I use my fingers sometimes, which I probably shouldn't. 
Um, I have got glue on my fingers. I haven't glued my fingers together yet, but that's always the first time. So I'm just going to start up the top, squeeze a tiny little bit of glue into the holes. I'm going to use the blue beads first. I tend to find it easier if I drop the bead on and then push it in either with my nail or with the pliers. I try to get them sideways up, but it doesn't always work. Um, but it, it makes for a nice variety if some of them are sideways and some of them are straight. So just drop the bead into the hole that you put super glue in and then push it down into the glue. Into the sticks. So they are glued in now. And then work your way across. I tend to put glue in a few at a time. And let's put some some of these oops, bronze ones across the top there. didn't quite go in straight, but that's fine. There we go. So that's those four on the top. Now there's a hair there, let's put that off. Dab in this one. Um, I want to use blue in the eye corners. And the bronze ones again down here. A little bit too much glue in there. What you can do if you've got too much glue in one of the holes is dab the bead in the glue and then move it to another hole without glue and pop it in. And sometimes it does like sticking to the pliers, but there we go. Oops, that's shifted. Come on, stay sideways. Let's try that. Um, you don't have to use super glue, you can use any glue strong enough that dries clear. The beads do protrude a bit, so you want something that's going to be strong enough to keep them there, even if they if they do snag a little. You can see they, they're sticking up. And I just use super glue because I know it's strong, dries quickly, and it's clear. So, blue one again. And corner there. I have a kitten who is very intrigued by what I'm doing. He was wandering around the table, hasn't gotten into the shot yet. Okay, there's this big spiral here that I'm gonna pop a bead into. I'll use a blue one again. One hole on the end there. We'll pop a bronze one in, I think. Now you can put them 
into the holes of the spirals if you like. Now this spiral on the end is quite a big one so I think I am going to pop one in there. Let's see if I can find a purpley one. One of these was this one. one almost stuck to my finger. Just push it in a little there. And down here I have one little tiny hole that I'm going to put a green one in. To pop a little glue in there. Take a tiny green bead out. And drop this on. Oh, that one didn't quite go sideways, but that's fine. And I'm going to put a green one in there. A bit too much glue there. And squeeze that in. And then I have two holes left up there. They're difficult to see on the camera. There. If I move the camera, you will see a kitten. Hello. That's a squib. It's a very curious little boy. So, down in here, he's going to be a little bit awkward to get in, but. We'll see. I'll just drop them down. Oops, finger almost stuck there again. Oh, you went in the wrong place, didn't you? One bead down. Oops, let's try that way. There we go. And then this one. There we go, got that one sideways. So I think uh, I'm going to call this done. And just pop my beads back before the cat eats them. And put the top back on the glue. So, this is our finished piece. So it's not as complex as it looks. Uh, it takes a bit of time layering everything, waiting for things to dry, uh, adding coats and stuff. But comes out really nice in the end, I think. And then you can attach your necklace bale up here. Let me just show you that quickly. Um, I have gunmetal colored ones that I use. So just bend this open. And feed it through there. And close again. And then we can slide the chain through there. going to hang nicely. And uh, thus endeth the Dragon Eye tutorial. Um, I hope you're going to try making your own. 
if you do, please share with me your, your results. I'd love to see them and uh, hope you have fun. Don't worry about perfection. Don't worry if it doesn't look good at any of the stages. It's really only at the end that it all comes together. Uh, have fun, play around, try different things. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.